Insomnia tutorial, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be using uh, this uh, API, which is a to-do list API. You can find it, uh, this is the URL. I'm going to leave it in the description if you want to play around with it. Uh, I'm going to be using this to showcase how to use uh, Insomnia properly. And so, yeah, let's just copy this. Let's just go to Insomnia. So the first thing that we're going to do is create either a design document or a request collection. So if you click over here, design document, this is going to bring you to uh, this interface. And over here, you can start creating an open API specification file. And then if you want to debug it or test it, you can do it over here. Uh, in this case, we are not going to be doing this. We are going to be creating a collection, which is going to be task or to-do list. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new request and we're going to call it home. And this is going to be an HTTP request, uh, a GET request. And this is how you create your first request. And now you can paste this in and you'll see that it will make the request. If for some reason it doesn't allow you to, if you're using a, a server that's not secure, it doesn't have the S, it might not let you do this. And then you have to go to preferences and over here, you have to enable, uh, disable this. Validate certificates. You, if you disable this, uh, it will allow you to make HTTP requests to non-secure uh, servers. So we just made our first uh, HTTP request, which is a GET, and you can over here, this, this area, you can select the verb that you want to use, okay? It can be a GET, POST, uh, put, patch, delete, options, head, okay? Uh, normally you're gonna be using uh, these ones, get post, put, patch, and delete, okay? So then we, if we move over here, we'll see something called environments and uh, manage, if we go over here, manage environments, uh, we can define a environment variables, the same as the dot normal dot env. Normally I just create a new environment and I go over here and you can call this local env. Sometimes I have a local environment, I have a production and a QA. So you can create a multiple environments. And then over here, you can start specifying variables for those environments. So let's start with domain. And then we're going to just paste this. And that's the value for local environment. And let's just remove this. And over here, uh, it says no environment selected. Since we chose to create a sub environment, uh, as you can see over here, we didn't go with like the, the default one, which is the base environment. We, we chose to go with a sub environment, local env. So uh, we have to select that. So the way that we do this is just going over here and just select use local environment. Now we can start using those variables that we just defined. And the way that we do that is just opening twice curly braces and then domain and then we close twice. So now it link this with this environment variable that we just defined over here. If we change this to something else, let's just say to API with two eyes and we try to make the request, it's just gonna fail. And as you can see, it's working. It's just, uh, it's being synced. So now let's just go back. Let's just, and let's just leave it as it is. A good way to organize your uh, calls it's by creating a folder. So in this case, we're going to be creating a user. So let's just call it user. And inside user, we're going to create register user. And over here, we're going to grab the domain variable and then user and then register. And if we try to make a post request, is gonna say, okay, there's some stuff that's missing. That's where this body tab is gonna come handy. At this moment, we're not passing any body. So if we go to timeline, we're not passing anything over here. So the first part of this is gonna be the request. And this is the response from the server. As you can see by the, these uh, arrows, this is showing that's going in and this is coming out. And we are just passing, uh, these headers, and this is just uh, sent by the client, which is Insomnia, okay? So let's just go back, and we're gonna define which kind of 
body we want to pass in this case normally is json or maybe a multi-part form or if it's like a graphql api graphql query okay so now we can here define any valid json and let's just go with email and it's going to be test arova email dot org password okay and name which is gonna be my name and now i made the request pressing command enter okay and it says duplicate since this is the same email now that we have the user created uh, we we saw the, how to pass a uh, data over here now let's just try to create a task so I'm going to create a folder called task and inside this I'm going to create task which is going to be a post request and it's going to be JSON. So if we just add domain then task and then we try to make a request it's going to say place authenticate and the way that we do this is just uh, passing a authorization header with a bare prefix. Uh, before it and we could do this uh, over here trying to do authorization It's gonna show you basically all the suggestions, which is great. And uh, then over here there and We are gonna be copying this token that we Just received over here and send it over here. So technically this is working, but this is not the way of doing this So if you go over here, basically insomnia will allow us as to have a shortcut which is if you scroll down bear token and then over here we can pass the token and this is gonna work the same way the same way as we did before this token is gonna be changing maybe every 50 minutes every half hour or every day since this is variable we want to have this also as a environment variable so what we're gonna do is just copy this and then over here we're not going to call it token since we haven't created this it's going to show up as red. So let's just create this real quick. And as we did before token, and then we just paste that in, see that this is working. And as you can see, it's still asking for, uh, for us to basically add description. We will add this in a second, but the thing is that this token is going to be changing but it depends on something that we get from insomnia itself or the request one of the requests uh, it can be from the register is being sent a token or from the login itself so there's actually something even better than doing this so let's just remove this and we can add response and then over here is gonna allows us to basically select one of the attributes from another request. So let's just go with body attribute. Let's just click on it over here, select the request, which is gonna be a register user. And then uh, doing this dollar sign dot, and then we can start uh, basically selecting anything that's inside over here. So let's just go with token. And as you can see, it selected the token and now if I register another, a new user, user number three, as you can see, it's ending in W. And if I go over here inside my environment variables, I can see that the value is W. It just being grabbed directly from the response that I just made. I didn't have to copy this and then go over here and paste it. It doesn't seem like much, but if you are in your workflow, doing just these small things will basically allow you to save a bunch of time over days. Let's go over here, add description and this, that's going to be the description. And now it just created a new to do. Now let's just try to update this to do by completing it. And what we can do is just duplicate this and update to do. And that's going to be a put and over here task and then we have to specify the task id 
and we can grab this like this and then paste this over here and now let's just try to run this so as you can see it's working but the thing is that this ID is also going to be changing so as you might expect this is also going to be a variable so let's just open twice and it's going to be called task ID now let's just go to our environment variables I'm doing this with command E or control E depending if you're using Mac or Windows uh, so now let's just create the task ID and task ID is going to be pretty similar to the one to token it's going to depend to raw uh, not body attribute and then we're going to select create task and then over here is going to be data dot ID as you can see it's just being grabbed if this is not your workflow where you don't want this task ID to be set every single time that you create a new task just remove this and have it like this it just depends on your workflow mine normally this is what I do when I create a new task and maybe next time I want to do something I want to update the same task I just want it to be grabbed automatically I don't want it to be copied but if your workflow is more complex than this and maybe this is not the best tool for that so uh, if you are, are not going to be using this just remove it and copy paste it and that's going to be uh, be working the same way now that we have this uh, if you go over here timeline we can see that it's making an HTTP request to task and then this ID is coming from the environment variable and we see that it's uh, passing the header authorization there with a token that's also co coming from the environment variables let's just pass completed it's going to be true I'm not sure if it's expecting a boolean but now as you can see completed is true and we can change this to false I guess and it's working so let's just keep it at true and now let's just create an another task uh, and another one called uh, desk 2 okay now that we've seen that uh, let's just try to get all tasks so let's just copy this and it's gonna get all tasks and get all tasks is gonna be a uh, get I'm gonna be removing the body since it's a get request I don't need the body to be sent and if I call this it's gonna return everything and uh, keep in mind that this is working because I'm passing the token I, uh, since I du duplicated uh, the other request is gonna also have this token as you can see over here is sending other authorization uh, with with that token so now let's just try to see query so with a query is gonna basically append a query parameters to our request and as you can see it's pretty simple pretty straightforward the UI is super clean I just love uh, how insomnia works so uh, this uh, API accepts a complete parameter a query parameter and over here complete it true so if we do this as you can see it just filter it out and it's gonna be append at the end of our HTTP request task completed and true and we can enable disable this of course this true false can be uh, a variable every single place where you can define a, an input it can also grab a variable so this could be also a variable so every single input is gonna be you can add an environment variable there so let's just go with through okay and now it's filtering these values a header as I showed before uh, the only thing that you could do as I did before is just disable this and if you wanted to for some reason send this header in the, inside the header tag which I don't recommend if it's related to auth it should go uh, to inside this tab and then over here you could do bear token and then you close and this is gonna work the same way uh, so let's just remove this enable this and talking about headers there's also this tab uh, where you can basically see everything that's uh, being returned from the headers of the response but if you go inside timeline you could see the headers this over here I don't really use this tab 
I use this more often than not because I want to see what's being uh, what's being sent and what's being returned. There's another interesting thing about Insomnia is that it allows you to also see all the requests that you made. So I could go back to this one and this is super easy and great. It has saved me a lot of time, a bunch of times. So this section of the tab, it's uh, you can see the HTTP response, the number, if, we, if it's like a 200, the amount of time it took and then the size of it. And then another thing over here, as you saw before, you can use something called JSON path. Uh, they've got the, here a, a very s a small explanation of it. So over here, we can also filter the response. Uh, if let's say that I want to see only the description from all the tasks that are being returned, I could do that. And the way that I could do that is just doing this uh, dollar sign dot data. Then we're going to specify any index and then also description. And now I can see the description of all the items of all the tasks that uh, they just returned. Also, I can see the ID if I wanted to or complete it if that's what I was interested in. So let's just try to upload an image. And the way that we're going to do that, it's by uploading the user avatar. So uh, update user. It's going to be basically a post request is going to have the endpoint of domain user me which is basically the one that's defined in this API. And then it's going to have to be a multi-form, uh, multiple, multi-part form. And the key is going to be avatar. And then the value is going to be file. Then we define this, uh, we upload this. We make sure that we have our token, which we don't. Let's just specify it real quick. We have token uh, and it needs to be a put. That's since we are updating, it needs to be a put. So let's just send this. And that's how you upload an image. Lastly, something that you might use or you might not, it's uh, the docs. So if you want to uh, basically explain a little bit what each request is doing, you can click over here and start typing. Okay. And this docs is going to allow you or other team members uh, basically explain what this request should be doing. Lastly, cookies. Uh, if you want to def define any cookies, you do it over here. Cookies, you add a cookie, as you can see, pretty simple. You define all data or if you have the raw text, you can paste that in and it's just going to automatically fill this. You can define if it's going to be a secure or HTTP only. And then if you click over here, you can log in to sync some stuff with uh, Kong or you can upgrade your plan to plus if you decide to pay uh, to have like the, the monthly subscription ship to have everything synced between devices. But um, I've been using Insomnia for more than three years. I just love it. So those are the basics of Insomnia. If you want to have the same theme that I have, which I know that people will ask, it's this one, one dark over here themes. You can select any of the themes that you, you would like. And this is great. Uh, I just really like how Insomnia looks. The UI is super cool. And I think that it's, in my opinion, uh, a better choice than something like Postman. I think Postman is super bloated. It's got so much stuff that it just gets in the way of doing things. And Insomnia, it's super simple. Yeah, that was it. Make sure to like, subscribe. You know what to do. I mean, at this point is, yeah. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this or more tutorials. Let me know what you want me to do in the next one and see you. Bye.